Uh, so, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Evgenia. Uh, so, guys, how are you doing today? How are you coping with all this coronavirus pandemic quarantine situation? I find <laughs> that's great. Uh, are you tired of staying home because I'm just going crazy? I cannot take this anymore. <laughs> just. Too, too much for me. So nice. Uh, so as you stuck one second, I'm going to share my screen. Nice. You should see the presentation now. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, uh, my name is Evgenia Zdanovich. I am a front-end developer at YPAM Systems, Mainz, Belarus. I am going to be your lecturer this, even lecture this evening. So, um, um, as you all, my alma mater, uh, Rolling Scopes 2. So, I'm really honored today uh, to talk to you guys and uh, uh, maybe uh, teach you something interesting or useful. Uh, so, as you noticed, uh, we have a um, style guide uh, today as a subject. Uh, what have you heard about this? Or maybe you have some thoughts about what style, style, style guides are and what are they needed for? Maybe you write something in the chat. Have you use maybe something like that no one <laughs> okay uh so uh so let's start with um uh, definition. Uh, a style guide is a physical or digital document that represents the style, patterns, practices and principle of a company or brand and teaches how to use it. It might be a little difficult to understand how it might look like, so uh, I have an example. Uh, one of the um, best representation of a style guide is a NASA graphics manual. It was written in 1975. Uh, this document uh, defines how NASA design standards will be implemented. So uh, it covers just about anything you can imagine. You can see on uh, at the presentation, uh, it's billboards, logos, fonts, uh, even shuttles themselves, and planes, cars, anything. Um, all everything should be uh, painted or sized in a particular manner so um, everything uh, have to be really look like uh, so uh, if and if something wasn't defined it was probably uh, a pretty good premise that it uh, have uh, set on how you would apply those style guides and how it should look like. So, uh, concept of a style guide, it uh, includes design principles, best practices, uh, brand styles, if we're talking about not coding styles, but about brand style guide, uh, use case cases when it should be used in, uh, of, as we can see on a NASA example, uh, where we can use as logos and the colors and everything you can even imagine. Uh, also, uh, style guides can include writing styles and tone. It may be uh, when it comes to uh, some advertisement, how it should be written or anything like that. <clears throat> так, uh, so why would we need one? Any thoughts? Guys, <laughs> please, <laughs> something. <laughs> No, no, not so. It's any anything. Why do we need one? Maybe uh, dignify for, the stuff. Yes. For consistency. I'm sorry. Can you? Yeah, for consistency. Yes, for consistency. It's a good one. Yes, of course. 
maybe something else. OK, so yes, you all uh, answered uh, correctly uh, for uh, consistency to unify. Uh, so is it to be easily recognized? To, I'm not really <clears throat> get what exactly this means, but um, I. Uh, consistency, consistency. Yes, no. <laughs> So, okay, uh, the golden rule of any style guide is uh, that should be applied to a code. Um, so every line of code should appear to be written by a single person. Uh, so when we open editor and uh, look on a project's code, we cannot really tell maybe it's uh, Dmitry was writing it or Tom or Brad. It should be uh, simple to easy to read, uh, simple and nicely formatted, for instance. It's very important too. Uh, so uh, what style guides help us to it's keep, as you can see on the slide, keep code base maintainable, keep code transparent and readable, and keep keep code base scalable. So as you can see, I put the artwork in here. It's sometimes uh, we have very difficult solution, especially when it comes to big projects. Uh, it not always goes the way we, uh, as beautiful, as clean as we want to. So uh, style guides really helps us to Mm, keep it more uh, simple, beautiful, um, uh, help us to prevent mistakes we can uh, do by uh, writing uh, some random code and uh, not thinking how it can affect in uh, our code base in a larger scale. It can cause uh, bugs and uh, really big issues. Um, so uh, uh, it's very important to uh, big teams as the first place, because when you're writing a small application all by yourself and you are on the only developer who is going to read it or uh, maybe do some corrections in it, so you might need a style guide, but it's not that crucial as it might be when we're talking about working in big team on a big, very large code base. <clears throat> and uh, this is the case when using style guides are really crucial. Uh, so, um, um, так, no. Uh, for, uh, from my experience, what I can say, uh, for a year I worked on one of the IPAM's biggest projects accounts. The account is encountered about 150, uh, 1,500 people. So, of course, not all of them were developers, but you can imagine how big it was. Um, so it was mostly uh, several big applications, really huge applications that they were loaded with business logic and uh, they was divided into smaller uh, pieces, smaller applications. So all of this big, huge uh, code base should be, uh, must interact really well. It's um, should have similar interfaces to be embeddable to one another. So we have shared UI UX elements, internal style guides, internal components, the functionality libraries built internally. So as a team, uh, whenever I worked, we must uh, follow strict guidelines when it comes to uh, even stack of technologies we were forced to use uh, only uh, this for front end, some Angular, for instance, some .NET libraries for back end. It should follow the same protocol for every application. Developing a uh, component, components should be developed in a very similar way. They should look uh, similar, not similar, the same, same literally. So we have UI style guides, uh, internal code style should be plus minus uh, similar because 
you cannot go any um, anywhere when you just can't inject your components into an as application and uh, so delivered software should be easily used or changed uh, if it needed by other developers so every developer should follow strict guidelines so people come and go but applications still alive and it someone is has to maintain it so a, a good style guide you can see the picture it's cat here <laughs> Uh, uh, should set the standard of a code quality across the code base. This is this what I were mentioning? Uh, it's uh, for developers at the first place. Promote consistency across code bases. If it's large application and have different mm, repositories that should be uh, kept in sync. So. Uh, good style guide can increase productivity because we have we not, don't have to spend our time on uh, just um, fighting over what to use or how something should look like uh, and it also keeps developers from being overwhelmed and uh, again it's help us to save time to build awesome software so uh, this is uh, the subject uh, we face really often in a software role world. You might already uh, encounter in it. Uh, it can be described as it has a name, uh, bike shading, or originally it was law of teriality. Uh, when uh, people who are have to implement some difficult ta tasks. Uh, spend lots of time discussing over some minor issues. In original, um, originally, uh, uh, the author author of this law, Parkinson himself, or oh, he provided an example of a functional committee whose job was to approve the plan of a nuclear power plan, uh, spending the majority of its time on discussing what kind, of, what color should be the bike shedding uh, where staff will keep their bikes so yes it's a very common problem in a software we my uh, you i'm pretty sure you will be in this situation when the developers the team all professionals fighting over should we use single or double quotes now javascript or something like that uh, i um, listed the most hot and common topics that are can be uh, very spicy and uh, uh, start a really big fights for instance stop versus spaces if you have watched a silicon valley tv series does anyone saw this did <laughs> silicon valley no uh, there was a TV series, there was an um, episode where he and uh, the main character, I do not remember his name, uh, fights over taps and spaces with his girlfriend. It was, it became really ugly. They even broke up over this, but not <laughs> the case of real world. It's a little bit of, yes, Richard, <laughs> his name was Richard. Not like this in real world. No one is typing for spaces when <laughs> uh, when coding, but it is pretty spicy subject. It, uh, for instance, at my last project, we started from scratch, and it was hours we discussed in chat: should we use single or double quotes? Then double quotes in JavaScript one, and <laughs> people was really upset about it. It was uh, a subject to discuss over two months. Why? Why should we use those double quotes in our JavaScript. It's a serious problem. What guys do you think? Single double quotes in JavaScript? Are you what? What type of you prefer? Do you prefer? Not using uh, single double. Now <laughs> uh, we, we need pulling pulling to the have a winner. Uh, so uh, grouping ordering ordering CSS properties. Uh, someone um, thinks it is a bike shedding topic. 
I personally don't think so because uh, when we randomly ordering our thesis property, it can be really difficult to read our CSS and it might became a bit of a problem, but some people are fighting over uh, should be alphabetically or maybe uh, starting with a block and positioning, margins, paddings, and uh, we, we will discuss it later. Okay, uh, so uh, now let's get started on uh, style guides, on the very first one, HTML style guides. Um, I can share the presentation, so you might want to follow the links that are attached here to... to be able to read the guide. Do you need one, guys? Please, can you tell me? Mm. One second. Uh, so, uh, when it comes to HTML style guides, there's not a lot about to, to talk to, but still a couple of rules we should follow, or no, we should, yes. Uh, so, mostly it's about syntax uh, or formatting, for instance, don't capitalize text, including the duck type, so all the text should be uh, lowercase, not in, in inconsistency isn't a good thing to to use in your HTML. Uh, up, again, spacing, soft taps to spaces uh, to it, it might cause a problem. Some rendering uh, uh, engines might uh, might uh, Add some little space between the elements if you if we put um, additional um, space between not space but it didn't it, it I think might um, be visible on a screen might be different on different browsers so we should really uh, stay um, consistent on this one uh, nested well elements should be indented once to spaces double quotes Yes, but uh, for HTML, it's preferably to use double quotes. It's kind of like a standard HTML double quotes, JavaScript single quotes. It can be altered, but it's more generic rule. <sighs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> uh, so don't include a training slash and a self closing elements uh, and don't omit, don't omit optional closing tags. Uh, on about all this thing, of course, in HTML, this is more like uh, um, some piece of advice. HTML won't broke. You never get an invalid syntax, syntax error on HTML page, but uh, browser will try to fix invalid content and go on. So error handling is consistent for mostly of the browsers. So nothing really kind of like horrible won't happen if you miss some closing tag or something like that but we are good developers we nice people we don't omit text we want our html to be clean beautifully written and as robust as possible uh, so also uh, in some Mm, uh, rules that helps us to increase readability. They are not mandatory, not, nothing of this is mandatory, but uh, it's really good practice to follow. So, for instance, um, the style guide I attached to this presentation, they are uh, suggesting that we should uh, have a particular attribute order when we write in our text. So, in a class, then ID, then data, attributes, search for type and uh, so on. It's not, it won't affect the way your HTML page will be rendered or as nothing will be broken if you 
interchange the number of uh, attributes, but uh, it might increase uh, your readability for developers at the first place. Uh, also, Boolean attributes, they should be, if, if possible, written, for instance, disabled, not equals true, but just disabled, if it, if it possible. It's recommended uh, by specification, so we should follow this. And uh, reducing mockup as possible to, if I'm not mistaken, some uh, browsers want render too deep inheritance, for instance, if it's more than uh, 50 or 20, um, I think 20 similar tags nested one, one to another, so it might just stop rendering it. It was some time ago, if you read the, I think you will be have to, how browsers works, how browsers work article, have you read? Already no. No, I think no. Uh, you will. <laughs> Uh, so they are describing this problem of um, HTML the inconsistency on broken and you might be uh, interested and deep a little bit uh, in this topic. Uh, so next one is the CSS style guides I touched to. Uh, the very first one is also in Polish if someone is interested. So and Airbnb, uh, it's a um, standard uh, yes, they are of uh, this comment is to which one of the they parse and compile just in time the browsers uh, yes i mean i meant uh there is a article very popular how browsers work and uh, when i was studying we must we must re read it and i think you will too so uh, they described the problem of invalid not invalid but broken or uh, uh not readable HTML and they described how parsers are dealing with this problem. They fix it, but it's not really good solution to write broken HTML. So CSS. Uh, what do you think about formatting your CSS? I have list of uh, formatting rules uh what are you you do you use some of them or maybe uh, you just write your success just like <laughs> when i was studying i haven't i didn't follow any of those rules <laughs> uh, so again indentations soft steps stops to spaces uh, to be consistent also prefer dashes over camel casing as when it comes to naming uh you can use underscore or pascal casing uh in case of using bam we are going to talk about a little bit later about bam uh do not use id selectors any thoughts on why shouldn't we use id selectors uh, when it comes to our css code guys do you use ID for styles? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, good developers, <laughs> skilled developers. <laughs> I. Not for styles, yes. It's mostly used for uh, JavaScript to grab, grab some element, maybe not for. CSS, uh, especially it might be a, a very crucial for a biggest project when a JavaScript and uh, <laughs> not just ban you, they will, if you're working, they even fire you <laughs> if you do this. Yes, it's a good one. Uh, so uh, in case of a big project, for instance, you, 
you might have a front-end developers that write styles and HTML and JavaScript developers who works um, mostly with uh, JavaScript. And uh, if we are going to uh, use classes for JavaScript or ID for styles, developers can change them. Our code is going to be broken. There's going to be bugs. It's no one is, will, is going to be happy um I'm, i will cover bam i would in in a minute just in a minute we will talk about it when uh using multiple sectors in a rule declaration give each selector its own line just for increasing the readability and uh, for our code to be more beautiful uh, put the space before opening breathe uh, it's formatting, it looks more beautiful, not so cluttered. Uh, so the same for character and semicolon. Um, every closing brace we put on a new line again to separate our rules, our styles, increasing readability. It's very important, especially when it comes to big project big files over, I don't know, thousand lines of code is very important. Uh, put blank lines between rule decoration. It's a good one. So, mm -hmm. each declaration should appear on its own line for more accurate error reporting and it just looks better. Guys, I would like to ask, is it okay if I do not have examples right now? Is it maybe it's difficult to understand without CSS code inserted? Okay, nice. Uh, um, comma separate property values should include space after each comma. For instance, I do not feel good when I don't have a uh, code to show. So I'm sorry, guys. I don't, didn't think it's true. So also a good uh, rule, do not prefix uh, property values with a leading zero. So dot five instead of zero dot five. It looks more beautiful and concise. Also, um, I would like to emphasize when it comes to color, because it's very big, not big problem, it's not a problem, but you want to be consistent when writing code. And sometimes just the developers use RGB one place, hex, and the other than just color name white or black and it's inconsistent and not beautiful uh when we look at code after you just point shown is a half of pixel ah. <laughs> yes it's a good one i don't know who did it i think <laughs> I just copy pasted it and I thank you for noticing. I think it's more better works with half of uh, uh, RAM or something like that. Uh, I am sorry. Not not very good example, but uh, you get the idea. I will, I will fix it. So back to, the, to our colors. Uh, so Consistency is very important. So if we are decided to use hex, we use a lowercase, no RGB, no uh, uppercase, no white, black names of colors. And uh, it also, um, we can use RGBA for alpha channel, I think, but sure. It will be better if our colors and also our uh, wish choose pixels or yams or rams. I'm not sure how does it sound in English. I'm sorry. I'm just Russian. I'm lost. So did you get what I said? Uh, only one. Uh, um, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> 
сейчас. А, вот, size units. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> size units should be also consistency. You can use percentage if you need, but uh, units is better to keep the same. Ex exception for fractions, for a grid layout. If you're familiar with, if you already have a lecture on grid layout, so consistency is the key to success. So. Uh, Next one, oh, uh, I promised to talk about uh, BEM. Uh, BEM is naming conventions for classes in HTML. Uh, was developed uh, by Yandex. Uh, the main uh, core concept is consists of block, element, and modifier. Block standalone entity, big piece um, of markup, for instance, header, container, something big, solid, can be reused on its own. Uh, element, a part of a block, cannot be used standalone. <sighs> Menu item, list item, checkbox caption, part of the block, and also a modifier, a flag, on block or element. It's very often used for color, different color, different size, small, medium, large, or um, in a, if I'm not, not mistaken, yeah, it's a very good example of blocks, it's um, pieces, components in the libraries such as bootstrap or material, they have components, blocks, dependent elements and lots of modifier we can use to uh, alter your styles. So how does it look in code? So we have button, button is like a block, we can uh, add some flag to it, for instance, uh, state danger, I assume it's going to be a red button or a state success, something green, and we uh, uh, use dashes and uh, to separate our name of block, name of element, and name of modifier. Is the idea is clear? You can use hex, yes, you can hex some. Uh, yes. So, um, I would like to emphasize uh, the idea of BAM because I was a mentor uh, to guys who are just, I was writing crappy code myself, so it's a very, real big problem. CSS is really messy, it's difficult to read, it's uh, really lots of um, duplicates in code, so if you're will be writing some tasks that include lots of uh, CSS itself, not CSS and JS, a little different story. Uh, try to use BAM, it's a good experience. It helps you to keep your CSS structured, beautiful, easy to read. So really, I'll encourage, I'll, uh, encourage you to try it out because your mentor will be happy <laughs> to uh, read your code and you, you get the idea. I'm sorry, guys, it's really late here, so I'm sorry. So, the most interesting part uh, JavaScript style guides, and one of the most popular, not one of them, the most popular, uh, it's Airbnb JavaScript style guide. Uh, someone did someone heard about it, guys? No, yes. They have linters you can use as a course, it's popular, nice. Mm, so over the next 20-15 minutes, we're going to go through some of the rules. The most, no, not the most, not the essentials, but I found them really good to know about and so we'll start with objects uh, and the very first rule uh, we should or sh we should use the literal syntax for object creation. Why would we 
chooses not be a new object, not be a constructor, but for just literal syntax. Why? No? Mm. No ideas, guys. Uh, I think you you should already know this. Why else should we not? What what else should we not create via constructors? Maybe uh, numbers or functions. Have you heard about functions? No, you can't. No, you can, but you shouldn't. Uh, why is this a bad idea? No. Okay, so for object, uh, there is no big difference it's, um, besides the fact that it's shorter and easier to read. Um, and looks more beautiful, but for instance, if you use a um, constructor for primitives like numbers, it might lead to bugs. So, uh, in a current specification, we shouldn't really use constructors to create uh, variables. So next um, rule is, is use computed property names when creating object with dynamic dynamic property name. So as we can see on a um, Code example, uh, so it's really better to just um, define all our properties in one place. It increases readability and just increases readability. It looks better. So the next one is use object methods uh, shorthand. We do not write uh, function when we um, mm, declare a method for the object, we just uh, use the concise uh, variation. Mm, uh, if ECMAScript 6 provides better not better solution but just more concise more beautiful solution so uh, it looks cleaner and uh, we should use this one uh, the next one is do not call object prototype methods directly such as has own property properties enumerable and is property of so we can see the bad example when we just call an object has no property and pass a property in it Mm, why is this not a really good idea? This method may be shadowed by properties on the object we wanna test, and uh, it can be just rewritten with something else, and uh, uh, we can also create our object without prototype. So it's better to uh, follow the style guides and uh, just. Mm, call this method on a object prototype itself, not uh, just on an instance of the object we created. Mm, guys, if you have uh, if you have any questions, yes, it is more. Uh, so next, uh, <laughs> uh, next rule is uh, prefer the object spread operator over object assign. Uh, so it's a very good practice uh, in uh, JavaScript, in a computer programming in general. Do not mutate original array or objects um, principle uh, principle of immutability so uh, for instance in this very example we see how we can uh, just uh, add a new property by mutating original 
object and the better ways to do this, we just create a new one and add a property if needed to do this. So, um, it's, uh, it's better. It's a better way to do this in a current specification. Uh, so arrays uh, use the very first rule. It's to use literal syntax for recreation. It's the same for arrays and objects. As you can see, it also increases readability. And also, if we use new array to initialize our arrays, it might be cases when it can produce the output we are not ready for or just we not expected. Just a minute, I'm already in chat. I found a little bit. Um, about focus on flexibility, um, you mean uh, writing code that can be reused? Sorry, I do not really get the meaning. Still don't get it, Lana. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, we can uh, remember this question and discuss it on the end. Uh, or uh, this one. Uh, it's just, it's not strict rules you have to abandon. You mean in, in error functions, right? Uh, yes, I saw this on the, the if you don't like, for instance, you can set flag to a different to the false for this rule because it's just it just uh, for some of the rules that are represented in Airbnb style guides that are those are not strict. So if you don't like some of them, for instance, if you want to use one, it's uh, might not be a good idea because uh, it's really might lead to bugs and problems in code. When it comes to parentheses around uh, arguments in uh, error functions, I think it's not crucial. For me, I do not see a scenario when it can lead to a big problem. If you don't like parentheses, this one you can skip, I'm pretty sure. This works for those double or single quotes for uh, indentations, if you do not like those, you can just use the, the way you like. But um, in general, rules should be followed, but some of, the, of them can be abandoned without any regret, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so also use uh, array pushes to have top direct assignments to add items to an array. So you can see uh, as a very first um, code example, we as should for starts access the length of array, uh, perform one operation, then we uh, only after that we can add our new element to the end of the array. Uh, so uh, when we, as we can see in a better example, in a good version of the one, we just use push as it uh, looks more, more concise and if you have something that are already implemented for us, why invent a bicycle? You saw my artwork at the beginning. <laughs> Not my, it's just stolen from the internet. But uh, lots of uh, bikes can be invented with a square. Mm. Uh, so uh, you, it's better to use spread operators uh, to copy arrays. Uh, no for loops. It's not a good idea if you need to, to or slice. If I'm not mistaken, it is splice or splice. It's better to use um, spread operators copy. It's only one uh, line. Looks beautiful. Looks concise and 
just a nice way to do the copy. Uh, so convert an iterable object to an array, use spreads instead of array from. Uh, for instance, uh, it's a very good example. If we need to access our uh, elements from uh, document object model, so uh, we uh, have a collection, it's not an array. And to create uh, uh, a real array, to be able to use prototype method, we might want to transform it to real array. So there's two versions of how we can implement this from using from and using spread operators and Airbnb suggest us um, to use a spread. How about fill and then change values? Mm, about fill. Instead of uh, spread operator, or away from, right? That, to be honest, I am. I'm seeing this very first time. Just try. I'm going to try it. How it's gonna work in console? If you don't mind, guys. <laughs> Mm. So let's change values inside. New array is it and um, then pass ten to it and then fill, right? Why would you do this? Doesn't the um, ways we just uh, discussed are easier to read now to create new proper class? Mm. To copy or just create new array with 10 elements, right? Instead of uh, array from. Not a very good idea for you just creating an array with empty elements and you are going to iterate through the, this array and filling it. Can we do it in a one step, for instance? It's mutate, sorry. So, okay, I will. Mm. Okay, uh, we are going to have a, a small break. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna try to do what you suggest and, and we discuss it later. <laughs> uh, so, uh, use array form instead of a spread operator for mapping over iterables because it avoids creating intermediate array. So as you can see, uh, if we need to create an array, for instance, uh, and uh, change every value, if it's array of uh, numbers, one, two, three, four, and we want to now put array to be uh, one, two, three, four, no, one, two, three, four, but we want it to be Two, three, four, five plus one for uh, for every um, array member. So it's better to use array from in this case because we can pass a callback and it's going to uh, create just array we want to without uh, additional iteration. Mm, so use line breaks after open and before close the array brackets. Uh, so it's one, increases readability. It can be questionable. Uh, so for instance, someone might prefer bad 
variation like it looks here, but to be consistent and to have a more clean and beautiful looking coat, we might want to follow this rule. Uh, and uh, 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 so we, every developer will change the code formatted to the way it likes. So uh, to increase the ability, we might want to use a spacing and uh, multi spacing and what and formatting as uh, the way it's Airbnb suggest us. So uh, guys, maybe you are tired. No, maybe we should have in nine minutes small break. No, not too overwhelming. So, okay. Um, next is the structuring. Are you familiar with the concept? The structuring? Guys, guys, have you have, did you have a lecture on like my script six already? Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Yes, nice, uh, cool. Uh, so uh, use object destruction when accessing and using multiple properties of an object, it looks better it helps us to save the space save the time so examples bad version we uh, create single variable for every object uh, property and uh, better one it can be really way more concise and way more uh, easier to read so array structuring same thing, easier to read, easier to use, uh, but uh, one, um, one thing about uh, destruction, uh, so when we uh, return multiple values from the function, we should uh, prefer object destruction uh, before array destruction. As you can see in the example, uh, if we need to, for some of the Mm, outputs for some of the function calls. We don't want all uh, the values uh, returned by these functions and we should uh, create some maybe workarounds to get the values we need. It's way uh, easier to implement with uh, mm, objects destruction when we get only values we uh, want to um, Mm, we wanted to mm, have assigned to the variables. Uh, so next one, it's about strings. Uh, so uh, my favorite one, use single quotes for strings uh, in uh, JavaScript. Imagination, yes, yeah, so, so someone is uh, really not not everyone thinks that destruction might be easier to read. For someone, it might be more uh, obvious to have different lines and uh, on every line to, uh, variable declared. But we have new tools and we should stay in touch with new hippie, <laughs> not so hippie things. But uh, so, mm, also, strings that are too long uh, shouldn't be concatenated. Uh, why? Why is that? Uh, so it's uh, not just about bad and good. You can uh, concatenate or not concatenate your strings, but it can uh, affect the performance because strings in JavaScript, those are not mutable to concatenate string we should create a new one and add every mm, every character to the new string it's 
just looping over those uh, characters so it might get really slow so uh, in a matter of um, performance optimization we shouldn't really concatenate those strings as often just to make our code look better just keep this really a long string and um, your browser will say and your users will say thank you so but yes you can write <laughs> skip linter or skip linters <laughs> skip uh, i understand what you're talking about and you can just skip uh, off you can turn the linter off for just one uh, line it's better to make it uh, quiet than have strings concatenating yes <laughs> Uh, so uh, when uh, uh, programmatically building up strings, uh, use template strings instead of concatenation as the same uh, premise on this one. Uh, we have cool tools in our JavaScript like concatenating the string. So why uh, use good or um, old uh, way to solve the problem when have more effective, more beautiful one with backticks and uh, just inserting the variable as a place we need it we need it to be inserted so uh, also um, eval no using eval have you ever heard of eval guys no i think it's so rare and so forbidden So, yes, well, uh, so we, we don't use it, just <laughs> not a good one. It's uh, uh, to eval can be passed literally anything. It's uh, my uh, bro breaks application. It's not, not a good things to use. No use in any circumstances, no use. <laughs> so to functions, I, uh, use uh, name functions and expressions instead of functions declar function declarations. So, guys, have you do you have any thoughts why we should use function expressions instead of declarations? Yes, hoisting, of course. Uh, so when we have a function declaration, we can use our function before it was uh, in code, before it was uh, written. It's not a good practice. Function expression do not hoist, and it uh, help us to keep our code more consistency, consistent, more uh, less back for uh, than if we have all this hosting situation happening uh, so uh, very so next rule is going to be uh, we shouldn't uh, declare a function and not function block so as we can see browsers might react to this piece of code really difficult it uh, might lead to behavior behaviors that are going to be different in different browsers hence bugs hence problem we don't want this so functions uh, shouldn't be block in declared in block so guys what about a small coffee break or oh, not coffee it's too late for coffee so not just not bad but it's better to uh, write um, uh, something like so. It won't hoist. I, I'm not sure 
So guys, let's put it on hold. Uh, after five minutes, I'm gonna be there. So uh, we will continue five minutes later. Okay, smoke, tea, just <laughs> whatever you want.
So guys, so you're there. I'm back. I'm still, still relaxing. Welcome to you too. So uh, are we going to wait for one minute? Or it's already or six? Uh, to be honest, guys, it's a subject um, I'm not expecting in a lot of stuff is pretty really nice written in Airbnb itself. They did a really good job writing and explaining why. We're going to look over the presentation quickly. If it's something that's not, I will stop on uh, essential ones uh, because it's late. You are tired, I'm pretty sure so. And then we're going to uh, do some little tasks, task in the end, not a task, but some a la, something like a quiz, or we're going to look over the some code, and you will say is whether something, uh, what is, what is going on there, and why, uh, what should be corrected. So uh, let's start. Let's oh, not start. Just let's go and finish it as soon as possible. So never name parameter arguments. It's pretty obvious one. So because we have arguments, it can uh, uh, it's we cannot name our arguments as well uh, the same as uh, arguments of the function itself. So just create some another name for the uh, are, uh, for the parameters, so never use arguments. Uh, it's preferably to use rest syntax. Its uh, arguments are not an array, it's a pseudo array. So we're just are going to use modern syntax, modern uh, ways to, um, to solve old problems using spread. Uh, REST syntax, I'm sorry, and just use all the benefits of the array for our uh, uh, arguments of the function. So uh, use um, default parameter syntax. So uh, we have um, an opportunity to, in case of uh, nothing is uh, passed or some parameters are omitted when we call the function, we can uh, uh, use a default value to uh, use it later in our application. For instance, really bad code, it was uh, we can, uh, for instance, pass in our function null uh, or just zero as a number and the code, if we will run it, it might uh, skip uh, our uh, value that we want our parameters to be and uh, just it can lead to a bug really easily because it's Mm, use can uh, convert to boolean uh, some values we don't want to be converted. So uh, better use default arguments. It helps you to eliminate bugs and problems in your code. So avoid side effects. Uh, we don't want to to our variables to be mutated inside the functions. The same <sighs> principle of immutability. We want our mm, functions be as pure as possible. If it's uh, to, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little tired. <laughs> So, excuse my uh, English. So, uh, did you get what I'm trying to say? No mutating uh, external variable because it might lead to bugs. We can see this on our example. So, uh, never use function constructor to create a new function because just not good. It's uh, strings passed to constructors is again very unsafe and um, not good practice. So uh, spacing 
it's again the type of rules that are really up to a person but it looks more beautiful when spaced well and uh, are more structured then never mutate parameters because when we pass some sort of function and we are my um, uh, we want to be sure that our external variables are not changed, especially it might be important for race or object when we have uh, our values mutate um, in some place and we trying to debug, we trying to find what it happens and it might be really difficult. So try to use pure functions and immutable variables as often as possible. So for error functions, um, we use error functions when, when we uh, um, want to use anonymous functions, especially it's very popular, not popular, but it's really good practice to use them with our, for instance, array methods when filter map uh, for each, just anything, it's better. It uh, looks better and it don't have its own context. So I'm not sure that you're familiar with the concept, but if you are, so there's only benefits of using any functions. Uh, so, uh, if the function body consists of a single statement, one minute. So, uh, classes and constructors. So we have our model syntax. We are using classes, not prototyping, not constructors with functions. You should. You should must know how does it works, but really when we have a beautiful syntax, it's more concise. Uh, why would wouldn't we use one? So uh, uh, for inheritance, we use extends. Uh, also, it's very good practice for um, methods uh, to return this if we want to change some property. It's important. For not important, it just sometimes it looks better and it helps us to create more concise code, easy to read. It's really uh, um, in the most cases we just wanted to increase readability and how our code looks. So uh, also we might want to use to string methods or to string override it to not override it. Override, yes, uh, method to string to uh, be able uh, to, <laughs> for instance, for functions, it's for carrying, it's, it's used for carrying uh, to uh, have or value when we do not, when we uh, called function several time with several parentheses in a row. So we might want to use to string. It's not really, uh, I cannot think of a use case just from uh, top of my head of when we want to use it with objects, but with functions, if you want to chain uh, some function calls and uh, uh, infinite number of uh, parentheses after something like that. Um, sorry. Mm, something like it called current and uh, for those cases we use to string to make this code work. So um, we also should omit uh, empty constructor with we do not perform any uh, manipulations in the constructor or just uh, if we only call super there so it can be omitted. It's just uh, more easy to read and do not it helps to concise what we're trying to write. So um, now properties. So uh, we 
use dot notation when accessing property. We can see bad examples through strings and square brackets. It's better to use uh, dots, but we want to use bracket notation when we are trying to access some random, not random, but just uh, maybe a computed property and we pass as a variable to the, mm, the square brackets. Uh, so uh, when it comes to variable, it's a hot topic. Uh, we, how to declare our variable? We uh, use const or let. We not we're not using vars. We are not just uh, uh, declare our functions without a keyword. So it's what is going to happen to in uh, the first case, guys. Uh -huh. it's, it's <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't have to uh, answer this question because it's written right here. We can, uh, the, uh, this variable are going to be added to the global uh, namespace to the window object and it's not a very good idea to uh, use the window object when we uh, create new variables. So also use const or let uh, on let uh, declaration per variable. So it's again easier to read and uh, because we are uh, one for every variable or uh, different declaration. Uh, so uh, now cluttering the code one declaration, one line, one const uh, keyword. So uh, for increasing readability, we should group const and let, um, not mix them up. Just top of the file let's or const, then let's and uh, it's looking, it's gonna look more uh, accurate. So Assign variables when you need them. Mm, again, increasing readability. Uh, it's sometimes better to uh, declare variables in uh, the top on in the top of, on the top in, in the functions to increase again readability. And uh, if we try and just increase readability, so. Unused variables, it's not a very good idea to use to just write variable and uh, uh, then not to use this. It uh, takes it takes play space. It's just to make my confuse some developers, some people who are going to look uh, or read your code after you, why is this X here? What is this for? Can I delete it or not? And it also takes space and uh, just sitting around there and doing nothing. Just. So uh, also a really big subject, comparison operator inequality. For instance, it's um, considered good practice uh, use triple equals instead of double because it's um, not. Mm, I'm not sure how to say it in English. Uh, without. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, also, uh, there is a case as if, for instance, you have a function that are going to uh, compare strings, and nothing is going to be passed to a string. If and if you really know what you are doing, you might want to use double equals, but. It might irritate your colleagues, or you might not consider all the mm, ways or all the parameters that can be passed to the function. So it's better practice to use uh, triple equals over double. So, but it's sometimes can be really uh, just to your judgment if you really know what you do. So conditional statements. Uh, so. 
do we uh, need to go through this we <clears throat> kind of like in a javascript object it's to true undefined to false and uh, when we are going to compare uh, those um, we should keep it in mind so some numbers are going to be uh, converted to false in <clears throat> Conditional state statements, for instance, as in, ex an exa in an example before, when we uh, mm, talked about the default parameters, uh, if we do not have in mind <clears throat> how some of, uh, for instance, numbers are converted to booleans, we can get back, we can skip uh, uh, the value was passed. If, sometimes it's not the case, it's not really. Uh, something we wanted to have in our code, right? So JavaScript is tricky. <laughs> um, so you should count for booleans, uh, but explicit comparison. So it's also increased readability. Why would we need to use to write this num long line is valid equals true when we can just write if is valid? It's just more concise looking just looking better uh, and uh, helps your colleague to save some uh, mental health. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's about uh, ternaries. Uh, they should not be nested because it's again it's difficult to read. Some some can be skipped. Who has the time to read this first one and uh, sit over it and oh my God, what I'm going to have if I put just this value or this value, just not not a good practice, not a good um, um, way to write your code. So uh, avoid unnecessary Turner statements. So also why, 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 why this exist, right? It's not not a good not good or why why would we write this when we can do just way more concise and way more straightforward mm, control statements uh so in case your control statement if while gets too long uh it's about formatting to how do you uh, manage too long lines of code and um, just so we can see bad bad examples too long line i have to scroll to be able to see what is going on in the end so or just kind of like what why just <laughs> it's better to uh use parentheses and then if we have some long uh, conditional control statement and then uh, just for every statement, one line, it just look and easier to read. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling I'm, I told it like a thousand times it's easier to read, but it's really, a, really, it's might be a problem when it comes to large code bases. I just cannot emphasize this enough because it saves your time it saves your uh, I don't know again mental health when you are trying to go over someone's code and it's right written in a messy way and it just you don't understand what's going on you should format it so readability it's a place really important role in um, in your work and how should you should write your code so <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Doug, don't, don't use selection operators. Uh, yes, of course, it's not a good way. Just uh, it's not obvious. J way it's looking way better. We, if something, we should invoke this function. Not just uh, this. It's my look more look more concise, but it's uh, not easier. So commas, uh, about commas, uh, leading commas, we don't use once. Why should we use this comma when you, uh, no, not everyone in 
thinks it's a valid rule, but when you use a version, version control system, it's just better to have your commas uh, in the end of the line, because uh, when, uh, for instance, a uh, git, uh, I don't know, when we are, want to compare some uh, uh, lines what was written by a uh, different developer developer will be trying to uh, find out who wrote this piece of code when we have uh, li uh, we don't have a training comma the person who are going to put next line uh, it will looks like he made changes in uh, um, a line when he put only comma in if you are looking at the javascript no, to the airbnb they have picture i'm sorry i didn't put it there but they have picture how it's going to look in your version control system for instance or in your ide when you can trying to blame someone who messed up the code so um, oh, trail and comma. Yes, we add this because it uh, helps us uh, to have better uh, our comparison when it comes to version control system. Uh, semicolons. Yes, yeah, we use semicolons. Of course, JavaScript is. Um, very forgiven on this part, but we are good developers. It's is there the cases it might lead to bugs, but uh, it can raise an exception as we can see in an example. Uh, so we are just using semicolons everywhere. It's a good practice. Winter says you add something to it when it was when it was heaven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, tak. Now, so now, and I got it. I got it. Uh, so, uh, if you're looking at the presentation, I can share a link. It's, it's an application. When I was a student, student, I wrote it. It's a piece of a software. I would like. No one is never. <laughs> so, it should be burned. But. Uh, in educational purposes, guys, uh, you can uh, just take a look for a couple of minutes. So, and uh, then we're going to go through this application and you might uh, say something you didn't like, or maybe I did something you saw uh, in this lecture or in a style guide, uh, best practices, worst practices, what, what should, you should correct my code. And we are going to discuss uh, why is this not good? <laughs> it's really bad. So I'm going to open it. So we will start with uh, HTML. It's a working application. We had a task. It was about creating a game. It's a pretty simple. Uh, come here, please come back. Oh. It's game. So uh, you start a game, you flip the cards. Have you do you familiar with the concept of the game? <laughs> you flip the cards and if you are, if they are matched, they have to disappear from the screen. And when you match all the cards, you won. Uh, so, straightforward concept. <laughs> So guys, HTML, do you have any any uh, thoughts? What should be, uh, what should be different? What should be, what shouldn't exist? <laughs> Feel free to write any uh, notes. What do you think line seven should break? Line seven. Great, okay, so 
Indentation, yes, indentation. Just uh, my eyes is bleeding <laughs> when I see this alignment, right? I uh, need a scoreboard, N not a, to the implementation, to the code scoreboard, yes. Yes, indentation of UL, maybe something, something. Guys, let's, let's, what? <laughs> Name of class in your what name name name? Yes, class names. They are kind of like random. You all you all. Can you please specify the line? If not enough, not enough. I'm missing something. <laughs> top nav. It's nav, top nav, uh, underscored. What? What is? What, yes, it's underscore. It's not. Uh, I'm not using BAM, obviously. Here, just random words, just kind of like snake, case, why? I don't know. <laughs> I just liked it. Uh, so, yes, it's not a good class. Naming not lined, yes. Naming class is just um, random. Maybe something else you can see, just you don't like. What about uh, quotes? As we discussed, we sh yes, it's yes, is this piece of code kind of like why, why, why do you exist, right? Section, section, just what is going on here? Uh, if I'm if 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 too too messy. Is yes, I it might be like it's didn't it's uh, not closed. Or maybe it's just no. It's okay. It's closed. <laughs> Format code. IDs instead of class. Yes, IDs instead of class. It's for CSS, but I also needed this ID for JavaScript. It's not. It's not good, but it's not crucial. So uh, what would I like to change there is uh, the first place, of course, indentation. So naming of the class is just random. Format code horrible. Just I. Bleeding eyes. Uh, so uh, also, I would like to just why why is this white space here? I don't know. So next one also, I I'm calling the function. Uh, I'm not adding an event listener. I am uh, just you call my function in HTML. It's not a good practice. It's not not well read it code so it's last place when you're going to with you when you're going to debug or look at someone's code it's the very last place when you will trying to find function call it's in your html and yes and tech it's uh, css just this one a section have shoot each element <laughs> Uh, mm, uh, H H H must like mm. lines forty three. So so so. Ah, uh, meaning ah, uh, hazing, he right? Yes. Well, of yeah, maybe. I'm not sure that every section should have one. It did it. Where is it described? Okay, I'll check this out. I haven't heard, but I'm gonna to educate too. <laughs> Tag heading. Uh, also, uh, what I would like to notice about this. Tag, just one moment. It's a lot of lots of magic numbers. We didn't discuss it in uh, our lecture, but just what what is going on right kind of like 16 why it's just 16 is number of uh, tiles on the board but why is this in html kind of like 
<laughs> not good, right? Uh, so uh, this nice for this lots of magic numbers. Yes, it just. <laughs> So the very next one, what uh, we're going to look, it's my CSS code. What's any thoughts on this <laughs> subject? <laughs> and, um, yes, indentation. Horrible, checked, right, very nice. VM's person pixels <laughs> I used. I just used everything I could have just find. It's horrible. <laughs> Tabs, yes, indentation, just crazy, crazy. Spaces also just, they are random, kind of like, I'm got, it's uh, somewhere it's there, somewhere it's missing, just crazy. Using ID, yes, just yes, right? ID is horrible. <laughs> yes, ID. Yes. No spaces, yes, no spaces, no columns. Somewhere they are in place, somewhere they missing. It's just random. <laughs> Doesn't look good, right? I didn't follow any stall guide. I just kind of like throw some code, throw some lines, just making nice CSS. Class names are correct. They are not followed any kind of like system, just random, right? Header wrapper main no they are not correct for instance i also use just name tags uh this is not exactly wrong using a uh, tag name for styling but it's more for big application when you are trying to kind of like unify your styles and unify uh, some kind of like library approach. You might want to your buttons all to be, uh, for instance, with rounded corners. But for uh, it's better approach to use just classes, no name tags. As you can might notice, I also use just this if I am trying, to, was going to try to refactor my code, and I kind of like thought, I don't think think it have to be a uh, list. It should be something else. And I, if I've changed my mockup, it would have break the styles completely. So it's not a good practice to rely sometimes on the tag names names when you're trying to apply specific styles. Classes just for styling, simple, easy, and beautiful. Hex colors, yes, capital letters, not just capital letters. Somewhere it's uh, you can see it's uh, hex. Somewhere it's capital. Somewhere it's lowercase. I think I thought. I saw, I saw even color name, some kind of like white or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes. First line of HTML style, line. Can I take a look? <laughs> Just a moment. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it was on purpose. <laughs> Just <laughs> it's more like a random thing. So you can see it's there is no uh, spaces, um, no. Uh, uh, what I have noticed, as you guys, indentation, yes, you have noticed your spaces just messed up. Missed some columns, as you said, yes, missed just something crazy going on. Styles uh, for name tags, uh, ID for styles, yes. Then I mixed everything up, rams, uh, color 
names and the capital or uh, lowercase letters. So uh, also I would like to notice this, I use flex and float. So to be honest, when we have in uh, 2020, we have all of a fancy grid and we have flex, or we should use floats only for uh, the purpose it was created for to uh, float around uh, the pictures when we want our um, text to kind of like float, like in a newspaper, we have a picture and text just floating around it. So it was uh, the purpose the float was created and developers used the uh, floats to create more markup. So now we don't need it. So I should have just why float left. I don't know, guys. It's just well. So, and then also as you uh, root uh, color white style. Is it better to move all used colors? Yes, um, I don't think I was familiar with uh, variables in CSS back then. <laughs> it was uh, three more than three years ago, so it was not so uh, well known, especially as you can see, I'm not, I wasn't. <laughs> it's really a low chance that I was aware of this uh, feature. So also I would like to emphasize uh, its um, mm -mm -mm, spaces, for instance, here. Then as we discussed, you for better readability, it's also looks better. Just we should omit this zero, just dot five seconds. I mentioned it, I'm pretty sure. So also no property order. Uh, why is this can lead to bug? For instance, I have this pretty big block of uh, property uh, declared. They are declared a pretty random order. Uh, sometimes they can be duplicated or just I'm trying to debug something. Am I just looking over the group of uh, properties related and uh, I might not notice something or and I can skip it just it when block of CSS is uh, consistent and the property are in every block uh, follow some pattern and in the way how they are ordered it's way easier for a developer to debug, to read your code. For instance, I even pointed, um, I was going to point out some line, just just give me a second. Um, just... Um, mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see, I used margins for align something is margin top, margin bottom, margin left, and margin right. What? So yes, you can you can do <laughs> you already noticed, yes, it might be better to use concise uh, version of uh, this uh, margin, uh, decl not declaration, but for this margin property, and also it might be kind of like lost, kind of like I'm looking for this this block and this one is just hanging around just <laughs> just missing guys someone is unmuted so mute your mic or are we going to <laughs> listen to what's going on to your apartment so just not, not a good written success right and now the most uh, interesting part is of course javascript so take a look Say what would you? Oh, Jesus Christ! I'm sorry. So what would you change? Function declarations. Yes, of course. Function declaration instead of function expression. It's, it's my very first rule about functions, and I didn't follow it. <laughs> what else? Uh, guys, do you see my screen? Oh. 
the gnome. It should be fine. So, uh, function declaration. Yes. What else should we uh, correct? Yes, spaces. So just random. Without const. Yes, without const. You're right. <laughs> it starts from the beginning. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, more questions than answers when you're trying to <laughs> take a look at this piece of code. It's on top. Uh, I uh, uh, let on top. Yes, let. Instead of const, do you mean this? <laughs> yes, they they are. Oh. I I can't find this. Let's um, just. They, I think those are just um, redundant. That pattern, yes, comes. That, yeah, this works. It's that just using a double uh, equals instead of triple. It works. It's just fantastic. I don't understand. It shouldn't. <laughs> Twenty-three and twenty-two. It just yes, it's so it's the way it is. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, I I don't know. It's just not working correctly. I don't understand why. Is this maybe? Oh yes, yes. Ah, uh, it used just um advanced user of CodePen as you can see. <laughs> they are essential for the application, <laughs> those arrays. So uh, as we uh, as we discussed um, uh, when we talked about HTML, magic numbers those are just everywhere it's not about uh code styles but it's just in general kind of like why eight right kind of like wait why eight why do why one why two kind of like why was this happening seven hundred not easy to read not easy to understand uh so if you are uh, uh, Take your time and scroll over the bottom of the page. You might notice our keyboard here. So we're not using bars. We're using lets or const. In case of the very beginning of the file, it should be const. It just also starting with the beginning. It function and lots of outside variables that are going to be mutated in this function. In this function, it's very bug prone situation. We mutate those rays, or we just uh, deleting the values by uh, assigning length to zero. Just it's. It's my lead to a really uh, difficult to find and debug problems. So also um, I used, as you can see, function 
I should have uh, in this situation. It's a classic approach to you. Or it's a classic application to use uh, approach more uh, object oriented, not just functions, maybe some class, some create some object with method methods that can be called. It would have been way more easier to read and easier to maintain. As you can see, I used uh, for a stopwatch for timer function. Why would it? Would, why did I do this? I don't know. I should have used, of course, class. Also, as you can see, just functions, uh, not through prototypes. It's just function declared is inside of an object. Why it's my leads to memory leaks it's not a good not for this small application but if you're going to for every instance of a class create their own functions it's just not a good practice it's it's my again lead to memory leaks just unnecessary effort uh so also my favorite part it's quotes somewhere it's single somewhere it's double it's just inconsistent it doesn't look good so uh for martin as you said it's just not okay just bad <laughs> random so uh also uh as you as i mentioned it's not a good practice to mutate arrays on objects or anything in just array an object in the function so uh this is exactly the way I implemented shuffle function. Just to give me a moment, please. Just it's mutates original way. What else did I do in this function? Yes, good one. It's just uh, not using uh, interpolation, concatenation. Yes, what is wrong with this function, guys? Just, just, just please. <laughs> what is not good? With can you see my screen, guys? With memory tile shuffle, what is not okay with the function? Yes, let definition. It's just n n not good. Every Variable, different line, different keyword. This is calling array. Uh, calling array, calling array. I'm sorry, can you please uh, explain calling array? What does it mean? I might miss some, might miss something. I might miss. Okay, uh, I saw this a lot. Please. No, just one. <laughs> just one. <laughs> but he he's in pain. It, it, it it's in pain. <laughs> this array is in pain. Uh, I don't know. From my point of view, everything is just not okay with this function. As the very beginning, it mutates original array. Why? not good practice practice so while loop why would i use one i just just maybe i'm pretty sure this might be some way more optimal decision for this all this j and i variables not a good naming uh then uh, but as you know just declaration not, not separate declaration for every variable just all is just cluttered in one place so it's just not not good implementation of a function. Just not good, not good bet. So uh, also vars, as I mentioned. Uh, so uh, also I would like to emphasize. Uh, I have function here, for instance, uh, time formatter, and the very first thing I'm doing after. Um, uh, after function starts, I just mute it. I just change the uh, value of a parameter. So not good again. Yes, I don't know how 
does it work? Does it work? I don't know. It's magic <laughs> JavaScript. So also, I would like you to take a look for something. Just one second. And I want to tell me what is wrong. What is wrong with this line, guys? Any ideas? What what is what should be changed? Okay, I guess everyone is sleeping. Uh, it's we can uh, pass to set timeout not only function as we usually do. We can pass a string that is going to be executed by using eval eval, eval function. So unsafe, not good practice. Don't do this. I do not. I don't know. I just kind of look at this code and kind of like, how is this even works? I wrote it back then and uh, as you can see it's unsafe i'm pretty sure it might be the very first time when you see this kind of um uh, put uh, argument in set timeout because just although normally it's a function but here it's a string it's not safe it's not a good practice is i think it's even deprecated now in the uh, current implementation so guys I think that's it. It's uh, pretty late now, so uh, I think we all uh, are pretty tired by now. So I would I really hope you learned something new or something useful in this lecture. I uh, know so it's not just without, but it's better to pass function to set them out and not a string because it's unsafe when functions yeah, no, without quotes yes without quotes in uh, in uh, in natural yes it shouldn't be quoted it just should be a uh, function mm, use an array fill so you need to search for oh. Refill map. Uh-huh. Yes, it's close. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess I don't want that. It's too late, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not in a condition to uh, solve JavaScript puzzles now. I'm sorry. So, uh, yes, I think if it works, it's okay, but it's not as you... It's better you use something else without uh, creating this array constructor. Yeah, it's not. It's not even close. <laughs> I think I've been be. Uh, it's just uh, I don't know. I lose. Uh, I don't know. The eyes would bleed if they someone saw this. Just. <laughs> Just to death because it's not good, but I hope for the best. I hope I learned something since then, and my code is a little bit better now. So, guys, have a nice evening, have a nice time. Uh, take a look at style guides. I link my presentation. I hope you will use this in your everyday code, and you, uh, as a developer, you will have more fun. So, bye. Anya, I'm to the show.